After a spectacular 12-year bull run, gold came crashing to earth this year. Faced with increasingly unfavourable macroeconomic conditions, including persistently low inflation, an improving global economy, surging stock prices and the imminent end to US monetary stimulus, institutional investors have rushed to offload bullion. As a result, the price of the precious metal has lost a quarter of its value and is on course to deliver its first annual decline for 13 years. Here to discuss the outlook for gold in 2014 is Evie Hambro, Chief Investment Officer of BlackRock's Natural Resources Equity Team. He's also responsible for running several funds, including BlackRock's Golden General Fund. Evie, welcome to the FT. Hi, thanks for being here. Gold, have we seen the end of the falls or, or could it rally? And I think that the pricing that we're seeing in today's market is very close to the kind of all-in break-even price that's needed to keep the gold companies at a kind of cash flow neutral level. You know, whether that number's 1150, 1250, it's pretty much close to where the price is trading right now. And I think that that's a, a key marker um, that investors are looking at. Also, when prices have fallen this year, we have seen quite a significant demand uplift coming through from the investment buyer mm -hmm. uh, in Asia and yeah. the jewellery buyer in Asia. So I think there's a kind of some pricing points there that are attracting attention. There's no doubt that the liquidation of the gold ETF holdings in the first part of the year really set the tone. And I think the, the quantum that's come out of there is probably the, the big number and maybe we'll, it'll drift a little lower next year. But we are, you know, it's battling against the kind of upsurge in physical buying. OK, so you think we might have seen the worst of the ETF outflows and things could stabilise from here, that the money that's left in these funds is perhaps, I don't know, for want of a better word, sticky? Yeah, I think that the, as you go down from the peak, the, the remaining amount becomes stickier. So we've seen circa 30 million ounces come out of ETF holdings globally this year, uh, a peak of nine down to around 60 or just under 60 today and I would say the remaining holders are stickier than the hot money that poured in on the announcement of QE mm. uh, a couple of years ago. Um, China has been I guess the real bright spot but will it be the bright spot next year? It, it's on course I think to import what a thousand tons this year. I mean, could we see yeah. the same level of demand next year? Yeah again that's a good question. I think that when you look at the China this year, China's overtaken India for the first time in terms of the leadership of the gold consumption globally. You know it has without a doubt surprised people the quantum of gold that's gone into China uh, and what's also in, more surprising than that is not only is China the largest importer but it's also the largest producer. Mm. So the total amount of gold that's being consumed in China is a gigantic quantum and you have to wonder where that gold is going. Is it going onto wrists and ears and necks or is it going into state reserves? And I think we'll need some clarity on that and that'll really set the tone for, for gold uh, in China in 2014. If it does start to show that some of it's gone into state hands, and that'll be very supportive for the gold market. That's interesting. Okay, and India, any sort of hopes there that, that they might emerge as a big buyer again? Yeah, well, I think that India will always consume gold. Just the question is how much on an annual basis. And that's determined by, you know, the, the wedding season, by the harvest levels, etc., and also the interference of government. This year has been a heavy year for the interference of government. You know, they've tried to curtail gold coming into the country as a result of putting you know, import tariffs and so on. I was just reading this morning actually that the Indian government is likely to cut some of those tariffs uh, on gold so we'll wait and see if that happens but if that's the case then that would be a positive for Indian demand for gold next year. It's been a tough year also for the general sort of commodity industry mining company shares um, but we have seen signs that these guys are trying to um, cut costs, reduce capex. Um, are you sort of getting to the point where you feel that they're actually starting to deliver now and that, that investors after this big splurge of the last decade can actually trust these guys to deliver what they say they're going to deliver? Yeah, that's the key question I think that you've mentioned there with regards to mentioning trust. You know, the, 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 the relationship between investors and the management teams had definitely had broken down and that trust had failed. Uh, and yeah, we've now seen a lot of new management come in with a lot of new promises, as you mentioned, on operating cost reduction, capital cost deferral and cancellation, paying down debt and increasing returns to shareholders and no M&A. So far, so good would be the headmaster's report. You know, mm -hmm. we're a year or so into the process and you know, everything is kind of on track. I think the key for next year is whether or not the, pe the people who don't own the shares today start to buy them back. And they, there'll be a checklist needed to be completed for that and that will be around a better picture for demand because people have been fearful about commodity surpluses. Sure. 
there'll need to be a you know, continuation on delivery to the promises that have been made uh, by the management teams in terms of the debt reduction and increased returns to shareholders. And I think if you can start to see those things coming through, then I think by the time we get into the second half of 2014, it might be too late because the shares will definitely have moved off the bottom by then if those things have come to pass. Okay, so the bottom for share prices in the mining sector could actually have happened this year in June. Mm. And if you're looking to get in next year on the back of these promises being delivered, you're too late and have probably missed, missed the boat, I guess. Yeah, I think that, that could be a scenario that unfolds, barring some kind of macro event that nobody's forecasting today, which has been commonplace for the last few years in terms of how frequently they've arisen. But yeah, and I, do, I think our checklist is definitely moving from the kind of red zone into amber, and there are a few actual green lights in there as well. So that's what we're looking for as we go into 14. Evie, thank you very much. Thank you. For more on mining and gold prices, go to ft.com slash commodities.